Welcome to the third installment in our online educational series. We hope you're enjoying the videos so far. This segment is called About Title 24. Let's quickly recap our first two videos. First, we explain the structure of the California Building Standards Commission and describe the people who make up the commission and their roles. Then, in the second video, we examine the building standards rulemaking process, including the players and their functions. One of the most important functions of the California Building Standards Commission is to facilitate the adoption and publication of the California Building Standards Code, Title 24 of the California Code of Regulations. We'll refer to it as Title 24 from this point on. In this video, we'll give you an overview of Title 24 and its parts. The California Code of Regulations is divided into 28 separate titles and contains the regulations of approximately 200 state agencies. Title 24 is reserved for the California Building Standards Code. Title 24 consists of 13 parts that apply to the design, construction, and alteration of buildings, facilities, and equipment for all publicly and privately owned buildings in California. It contains requirements for structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems and requires measures for energy conservation, sustainability, construction, maintenance, fire and life safety, and accessibility. In addition, there are provisions for existing and historical buildings. A few common misconceptions are that Title 24 is only applicable to energy conservation or to accessibility, or that it applies just to state-owned buildings and properties. As we discuss the various parts of Title 24, please note that it applies statewide to all building occupancies, numerous non-occupied structures, and a vast array of equipment. As discussed in our second video about the rulemaking process, some California codes are based on model codes published by the International Code Council, known as ICC, the International Association of Plumbing and Mechanical Officials, known as IAPMO, and the National Fire Protection Association, known as NFPA. You'll want to remember these acronyms for the following discussion. Now, let's take a closer look at each of the 13 parts of Title 24. Part 1 is the California Administrative Code. This part sets forth state agency administrative processes and procedures, fees, definitions, and required duties. Additionally, it identifies the procedural requirements to develop building standards, also known as the code adoption process, or rulemaking. Part 2 is the California Building Code that is based on ICC's International Building Code, with necessary California amendments. This code is for commercial and certain residential buildings, including offices, schools, hospitals, and hotels. As you can imagine, part two is the biggest part of Title 24 and is published in two binders, volumes one and two. State agencies that routinely propose building standards for this part include us, the Building Standards Commission, and the Division of the State Architect, the Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development, the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Office of the State Fire Marshal, the Department of Public Health, the Board of State and Community Corrections, and the State Lands Commission. Part 2.5 is the California Residential Code that is based on ICC's International Residential Code with necessary California amendments. Because this part is focused on residential occupancies, amendments are primarily proposed by the Department of Housing and Community Development and by the Office of the State Fire Marshal. Part 2.5 applies to detached one and two family dwellings and townhouses not more than three stories in height and to accessory structures with some exceptions. Part 3 is the California Electrical Code. This code is based on NFPA's National Electrical Code, with necessary California amendments proposed primarily by the Building Standards Commission, the Division of the State Architect, the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development, 
and the Office of the State Fire Marshal. Parts 4 and 5 are the California Mechanical Code and California Plumbing Code, respectively. They are both based on IAPMO's Uniform Mechanical and Plumbing Codes with necessary California amendments proposed mostly by the Building Standards Commission, the Division of the State Architect, the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development, the Office of the State Fire Marshal, and the Department of Water Resources. Part 6 is the California Energy Code. It is unique to California, meaning it is not based on a model code. This code was originally created in 1978 in response to a legislative mandate to reduce energy consumption in California. It is currently amended and updated by the California Energy Commission to, among other things, increase the efficient use of energy and water in buildings and to further the state's policy goals of achieving zero net energy consumption by buildings. Part 7 is a reserve part. No building standards are presently located in this part. It previously contained elevator safety standards that are now located in Title VIII of the California Code of Regulations. Part VIII is the California Historical Building Code, a unique California building code that was developed in the late 1970s. Its intent is to save the state's architectural heritage by recognizing the distinctive construction challenges inherent in historical buildings. The Historical Building Code provides alternative methods to achieve reasonable levels of safety in historical buildings. This code is developed and amended by the State Historical Building Safety Board, a unit within the Division of the State Architect. The printed version is located in a binder shared with Parts 10 and 12 of Title 24. Part 9 is the California Fire Code and is based on ICC's International Fire Code with necessary California amendments proposed by the Office of the State Fire Marshal. Part 10 is the California Existing Building Code and is based on ICC's International Existing Building Code. It is amended by the Building Standards Commission, the Division of the State Architect, the Office of the State Fire Marshal, and the Department of Housing and Community Development as necessary for our state's special circumstances involving existing building stock. The printed version is also located in the shared binder with parts 8 and 12. Because part 10 is the largest of the three parts in this binder, the binder cover features the California existing building code. Part 11 is the California Green Building Standards Code, also known as CalGreen. This is California's signature first in the nation green building code that addresses mandatory and voluntary sustainable building practices. For non-residential occupancies, it is amended by the Building Standards Commission, the Division of the State Architect, and the Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development. For residential occupancies, it is amended by the Department of Housing and Community Development. The California Energy Commission also amends CalGreen providing voluntary enhanced energy efficiency measures for both residential and non-residential occupancies. CalGreen promotes sustainable construction practices that foster environmental responsibility by reducing greenhouse gas emissions, decreasing water waste, increasing water reuse, and encouraging the use of building concepts and materials that have a positive environmental impact all with the goal of creating cost-effective and healthier structures in which to live and work. Part 12 is the California Reference Standards Code. When there are no known national standards or existing standards do not meet California's criteria, reference standards are developed by California agencies. This part contains amendments by the Department of Public Health, the Department of Consumer Affairs, the Division of the State Architect, and the Office of the State Fire Marshal. The printed code is located in a binder combined with parts 8 and 10. So, these are the parts of Title 24, the California Building Standards Code. It's a lot of information, I know, but wait, there is more. Throughout the three-year effective life of an edition of Title 24, purchasers of the code books receive two different types of updates. The first type of updates are errata, 
which generally correct printing errors or omissions such as spelling, punctuation, and other non-substantive corrections. Errata are printed on buff colored paper. The second is a supplement, which is printed on blue paper. Supplements are actual code changes that occur due to emergency regulations or changes without regulatory effect or code amendments made during an intervening code adoption cycle. Remember, the intervening cycles are those that occur between full publication of an edition of Title 24. Now, you might ask how you, the people who use the code, obtain your own Title 24 errata and supplements. Title 24 is printed by the three publishers mentioned before, ICC, IAPMO, and NFPA. You can purchase the whole set or individual parts from the publishers, depending on your needs. Additionally, all of the parts are available for viewing online at our website or on the publisher's websites. However, they are not downloadable for saving or printing because the contents are copyright protected. Physical copies are also available at over 200 libraries within the state. If you purchase a set or parts of Title 24, the best way to receive your errata and supplements is to register your purchase online with the publishers. You will then automatically receive printed updates. It is important to insert them into your binders as soon as you receive them in order to ensure that you are using the most current code. You can also view errata and supplements at either the publishers or CBSC's websites. Note that errata are immediately effective, while a supplement may have a specific effective date. A history note appendix that shows effective dates is included with each errata and supplement, and it should be inserted into your code book as well. Thanks for joining us on this tour of Title 24. As you can see, it's a huge undertaking with a lot of different parts. We encourage you to visit our website and download our Guide to Title 24, Guide to CalGreen Non-Residential, and Maintaining Your Title 24. All of these publications have a lot of detailed information to help you get the most out of your code books. We hope you have enjoyed this session of our online educational series. In the future, we hope to share more information about various subjects such as matrix adoption tables or the local amendment of building standards. If there is a topic that you would like us to elaborate on in a future video, please send us an email. Finally. CBSC's goals include educating the public about the state's building standards code and helping you understand and comply with it. Please contact us if you have any questions and thanks for joining us.